Hello class, um, let's talk about growth hormone. So by this point, you should have spent quite a good amount of time on the thyroid hormone pathway. And if you did spend a lot of time looking at the thyroid hormone pathway, what you hoped you gained is a pretty good understanding of the HP axis. So now we can expand, and now we're expanding to the growth hormone pathway. Again, to use, to reiterate, to use these notes, you should be have these notes printed all, read through, take some notes, read the book, watch some videos, and watch these videos, and try some problems, do some practice quiz, and go back and forth until mastery, okay? And if you have questions, of course, feel free to email me, come to my office hour, or uh, come to the virtual meeting. So the growth hormone pathway, I always open the first idea of the pathway on the, what does it do? Okay, so thyroid hormone regulates metabolism and the, and, and the obtaining of energy, right? Getting energy from the food we eat. Um, in growth hormone, right, you think of it as growth, but it's more than that. The growth hormone, not only here, we're looking at growth hormone here, not only grow, but you're looking at regeneration of um, cells and repairs. There's a lot of repair that the body has to do. Uh, and then of course, um, growth itself. But also growth hormone has a function in metabolism, the making of uh, energy as well, okay? So that is explained in this complicated picture that you kind of at first like, wow, what that is this, okay? So you wanna kind of look at this as a big picture and I explain the steps here, but I also drew it on two separate steps. Some students will probably just go straight to the simplified drawing and then read what's going on and then go back to piece it to get to the big picture. So you can do that as well. And so don't ever think you're stuck with one method. You can actually really go back and forth, look at the big picture, uh, look at this, how it's simplified, read it, go to the big picture, look at the big picture and go backwards again. Okay, so let's take a look at what are some of the different things in the thyroid hormone pathway versus the uh, growth hormone pathway. So one thing is, and we do have the HP liver axis, okay? So this hypothalamus pituitary liver axis. So this part is very similar, okay? Um, and this part is working through the same idea of the growth hormone, releasing hormone, growth hormone, and IGF. So now you're, you're just changing some of the terminology here. And of course, the response is different, but we still get the same negative feedback. So that's the, um, that's the part that is similar, but you do want to make sure you, of course, study the difference in the organ, the difference in the hormone, and of course, the different response in that the, gro uh, the growth hormone working through the liver and through IGF are regulating bone, cartilage, protein, cell, muscle growth, okay, growing of the body. So, and of course, um, looking at the fact that IGF will do negative feedback, so you do have growth homeostasis. You don't want to have muscle that just keeps growing, right? <laughs> All right. So um, the, uh, the other difference is that the GHIH is introduced here. So hypothalamus not only make a stimulatory hormone, it can also make an inhibitory hormone. So like an on and an off, a gas pedal and a brake. We already have a brake coming from IGF. This is another brake. So I want you to think about when you're driving a car and you're trying to maintain 35 miles per hour, right? You're going, you're speeding up to 35 miles per hour. Okay, you're now 40 miles per hour. I better let the let go of the gas pedal a little bit. Okay, that tells you to let, the, let go of the gas pedal. Okay, so you keep on doing this. You step on the gas pedal a little too much. You go back and let go of the gas pedal. But occasionally you actually have to brake, okay? So when you have to brake and stop, that is what GHIH is. It's the stop. This is the regulation of 35 miles per hour. This is the stop, the pathway, okay? So that's how you want to look at it. On the feedback, when we did the thyroid hormone, this part is all the same. But I do want to give you some idea how to look at GHIH, okay? So I'm going to mark this part up a little bit, but... Um, 
you don't have to mark up yours, but you can draw a different one to kind of really think about what's going on. Um, okay. So for example, we're going too fast, right? Too much IGF, too much growth. So if this is too high, you do the same negative feedback. So I step one, it will start here, it's too high. It's going to go to back here to negative feedback. And because this is too high, GHRH is going to go down, right? To make every, let go of the gas pedal, right? And then, and then, and then uh, GH is also going to go down, let go of the gas pedal. So it's one negative feedback, two, right? Three, the GHRH for the GH, okay, and you're now regulating that. So this takes time, but you can regulate that. Let's look at the emergency brake. Let's say this is high and you wanted to stop it right away, okay? What do you want to do if, the, if you're going too fast, you're going 45 miles per hour instead of 35, and you wanna stop that, what do you wanna do with the gas pedal? Do you wanna let it go or push down harder. Okay, so this has to be pushed down harder, increased. So you can see how this differ. The gas pedal has to let go and the brake has to go up, okay? One way to think about it is that GHRH and GHIH should be the opposite to fix the problem. Okay, so you can always think about that. One way to really think about it, I also tell students to do the normal one, two, three, four, whatever, five, six, and this will be the last thing you think about, five. And you can check your work by saying, I want to keep the break up to stop this, and I also want to be opposite of this. Okay, so that's how you want to think about GHIH. So when you work on problems later on, on pathologies, Remember, you can still do the GH, do the IGF, do the GHRH, and the last thing you think about is the GHIH, and that should be the opposite of this. Okay, let's go back and look at um, short, uh, the other part. There is a short-term pathway to growth hormone. It's very important, actually. And the short-term pathway is to metabolic energy, right? You need energy right now. And when you're looking at energy, it's the breakdown of food for ATP. So the two breakdown we're looking at is fat and carbs. Okay, so growth hormone will increase the burning of fat for ATP, and then of course the releasing of stored glucose into the blood to use for ATP. Okay, so if you look at that and you can draw a short-term pathway, it has feedback as well. You just don't go down. To the third item. So you have the same thing happening here, but the growth hormone in the short term regulating energetics for energy and for metabolism. Okay, again, you break down fat, break down glucose for the production of energy. Well, once if you now sat down and you were starving and you're using this pathway for energy, say you skip a couple meals, three meals, and now you're, you're using this pathway for energy, but then you got to a drive-through and you're eating, golfing down a huge burger. Obviously, you don't need to break down the storage anymore. So um, your GHIH can turn on to stop the breakdown because now you have the energy to use, okay? So keep that in mind as you um, are looking at the short-term pathway, okay? And again, I have words to explain that as well, okay? And apply your knowledge. Think about the two, two pathways. If there's something you don't understand, go back and look at what you have, may have missed. And practice this practice questions, and these will be converted to the practice quiz with some additional practices as well. Okay? And if you have questions about those, post them in discussion or post them in um, office hour. And then I then go into path pathology. So this be should become kind of, oh, this is... Um, very repetitive in some way compared to the thyroid hormone, right? So you think about why you learn the thyroid hormone pathway and then uh, apply it to the growth hormone pathway, okay? And also looking at this and answering some questions.
all right? So this is the growth hormone pathway. 